Hello, everyone. First and foremost, I want to shout out to our social audience. You are joining Oracle TV live from Cloud World 2023, and we are here with Executive Vice President of Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, Clay McGurk. Clay, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. It's good to be here. Um, now, we are sitting down just a few days ahead of your keynote, but we have uh, some insight into what's to come, and it is chock full of excitement. Yeah, so for starters, um, your keynote is about building the more intelligent future of the cloud. I want to hone in on uh, intelligent, because AI turns out to be a big theme. But I want to take you back one year, last year. Um, in your keynote, you sat on stage with Kelsey Zott, who's the co-founder of Adept AI. <clears throat> and this was uh, about a month before November of 22. And she was talking about um, training models, she was talking about transformers, she was talking about foundation models, she mentioned chat GPT, she mentioned Dolly, um, and you know, I think the audience was like, uh-huh, 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 and then a month later, the dam bursts, mm -hmm. and here we are, you know. So, what do capabilities like generative AI, natural language processing, what do they mean for customers of Oracle Cloud? Well, look, I, I think, you're exactly correct that um, nobody knew, uh, or at least I didn't know, maybe some people knew, but I think the vast majority of people didn't know just how big of an impact artificial intelligence was going to have over the past 12 months. Um, and you know, in terms of what capabilities it provides, um, I, I'm going to answer your question unhelpfully. I don't <laughs> think anyone fully knows yet. Mm. Uh, if you actually think about it, the rate of innovation in this space is extremely high. Right, if sometimes you have something that comes around like the internet and you kind of go, oh, I know what the internet is and then it takes years for it to come to fruition. Sure. Here, the yes, there's generative AI, but every week, every month, every quarter, you're getting new capabilities. If you go back, right, you know, chat GPT launches, then suddenly um, you have, it, right, but you have new, new uh, underlying pieces like retrieval augmented generation, right. how you integrate this into your systems both the industry is evolving and then what customers can do with it is changing so quickly. And you know what I tell people is, rather than trying to really fully understand it, the best thing to do is to get out there and play with it mm -hmm. and you'll see how you can use it for your workloads. Yeah. Interesting. Well, aside from AI, another main theme here at Cloud World 2023 is how we're putting our customers really at the heart of everything we're doing. Safra is speaking about it in her keynote. Um, and that includes partnering with other cloud providers to make customers' journeys to the cloud more manageable. Can you give us an example of customers taking advantage of our multi-cloud offering and what level of flexibility is available to them? Sure, well, we have a lot of multi-cloud offerings and uh, if you know you were paying attention last week when Larry and Satya made a big new announcement about Oracle Database at Azure, we're continuing to invest in them. Yeah. Um, you know, we, uh, across Microsoft and Oracle, we have a lot of joint customers and they, those customers love the Oracle Database and we've been working hard for years to make that available via first our interconnect and then our database services and now really around co-locating that technology together. Um, so, you know, if, if you ask for an example, um, you know, uh, you have customers uh, like AT&T and Vodafone, you have Voya, uh, the, pretty much any large enterprise is fundamentally a customer of multiple, you know, cloud providers. And I think we're just at the very beginning of what you can see from how cloud providers working together really enables uh, simplicity for our customers. Yeah, and we're certainly excited to hear more with Microsoft in your keynote, of course. But multi-cloud isn't um, the only area where we're partnering to offer mission-critical flexibility to our customers. Can you tell us a bit about OCI Supercluster? How did that get developed? What was the impetus and what advantages is it offering our customers? Sure, well, uh, you know, as we mentioned earlier uh, last year, talking with Kelsey on stage, the reality is that OCI Superclusters was a very uh, direct solution to a clear need. Mm. Um, the AI industry as a whole 
needs massive clusters of uh, you know computing power to be able to train these AI models. And so what we did uh, to create OCI superclusters is to combine the great hardware that NVIDIA is putting out, right. uh, along with the best in class networking, uh, package that together into a cohesive whole, and then make sure that it scales incredibly well and performs. And that's the reason that we're seeing so much traction from our kind of AI and machine learning customers because the it's about those non-functional pieces. Does it? How well does it perform? How well does it scale? And when it works better for them, you know, most of these people are spending a lot of money on these training training their models. Right. The fact that it's massively more efficient on OCI is a huge benefit to them. Absolutely. So it runs faster. Um, it costs less. Um, it costs less also because it runs faster. Um, to, let's just nerd out for a second on super clusters. Um, one of the things we talk about to those who, who you know, CTOs who understand what this kind of stuff means, can you explain um, our approach, the RDMA over converged Ethernet approach to building these super clusters? Sure, well, the first thing I think to understand is that fundamentally it's a cluster. And so uh, that sounds obvious in the name, <laughs> but when you go and build a cluster, it's about how do you bring all of these components as close together as possible so they can work together on a single workload, right? You, you only need a cluster if you're trying to solve a problem together. If it's trivial to distribute, then you don't need a cluster. You just have a bunch of, of uh, pieces out there that you can just manage separately. And the way you bring those closer from a networking perspective is first, you need to have a lot of bandwidth. Right, so our super clusters support up to 3.2 terabits a second of bandwidth between each rack. Um, you then also need uh, a very low latency. Um, so in terms of the, the selection of the hardware NICs that you put in the servers, the hardware switches that you use to connect them, and then the technology with things like Ethernet, uh, our super clusters support you know, a round trip latency between any, t any two GPUs in the cluster of 20 microseconds or less. Mm -hmm. But what's even more important than both a, a high bandwidth and a low latency network is the fact that, that the R uh, the, uh, is the remote, but the DMA part of the RDMA network, which is direct memory access. And what that actually means is that uh, you have to design the network such that those individual GPUs, they actually can go out and access memory in all of the other GPUs directly without requiring any intermediate software being in the way. So the way to think about it is you have this massive cluster of 16,000 GPUs and any one of those GPUs through the network can go out and touch the work that you're already doing. That's what makes it a cluster. And what makes clustering so hard is that when any one piece fails, whether it be a single GPU, whether it be a single link in that network, the whole cluster suffers. And so it's about driving that reliability up while at the same time having incredible performance. Wow. So we've seen with OCI remarkable growth, both in terms of adoption and also ability. What do you, what, what's the impetus for that? Um, well, I think uh, from an ability perspective, right, we've been, we've been very hard at work uh, my entire time at Oracle making OCI better every year. Uh, and you know, as we've grown uh, and you mature, suddenly uh, I think it becomes much more visible uh, just how great the technology that we're producing is. And so we continue to hire more people, we continue to invest in more regions. So it's just a, an area where we continue to invest in because we see the, uh, the great value it brings to our customers. Um, you know, in terms of the business growth, it's really about um, uh, the awareness getting there. You know, I would say OCI has been quite capable for a while, but take the, you know, I find with any great technology, the technology has to exist, and then it has to trickle through into people's perceptions. It's, it's sometimes you can get things that just take off immediately, mm -hmm. but in general, there's a propagation delay from when something's good until when people know it's good. And so because OCI is a newer cloud infrastructure, it's taken us time, you first have to prove it's great, and then it has to get through the ecosystem. And you know what we're seeing now is the fruit of the labor that we put in over the past many years, and that's the reason that we're seeing this great business growth. And what's also very exciting to me is it's not just business growth in one segment, right? It's not just, say, traditional enterprise customers. It's also AI and ML customers. It's also our application customers. So it's not just that we're growing deeper in each area. We're getting a broader and broader set of customers that are finding value in OCI. Yeah. And I, and I know, because this is you know right after your keynote, sustainability, a big topic there. Um, how is Oracle's business and our customers' business impacted by that? Well, I think that it's not clear to everyone, but it, uh, it's important to understand is that 
the worldwide kind of server side computing is already a big chunk of our energy consumption and our carbon footprint, and it's growing rapidly. And so what we've got to do is do everything that we can as an industry to ensure that we're being as efficient as possible. That's both uh, good for the environment and it's good business sense because we're also ending up in a situation where power is more expensive and there's just shortages of, of power availability. So one of the things that we've done at Oracle is we've really pushed towards technologies that are more energy efficient. And that's where we've been partnering closely with Ampere and their ARM processors. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that we've actually done over the past 12 months is we move 95% of all OCI services and all of our fusion uh, workload to run on top of Ampere processors. And the net effect of that is a massively lower energy bill, a massively lower carbon footprint. Um, but we wanted to do that so that we can show to everyone that you can take on you know, these big workloads and move them to Ampere processors um, and get massive savings both in terms of the environmental footprint, so you get a more sustainable computing option, but you also save money along the way too. Oh. Well, this has been great expanding upon your keynote. So, Clay, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thank you for having me. It's great as always. Awesome. Well, we are going to take a quick break right now, but don't go anywhere because when we get back, we'll be sitting down with Microsoft.